Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. I'm here with Robert Mariner Dodds, the creator of Carbon 2185. How are you, sir? I'm very good. How are you? Good, good. And um, congratulations. Uh, you and uh, Dragon Turtle Games have uh, six, are, have been successful with your latest Kickstarter, um, Terminal Overdrive. Yeah, it's it's done way better than we expected. We've almost hit all the stretch goals and we're at, like 10 days in. I always find intriguing that Cyberpunk's one of those genres that just never dies. There's something about that era of the future that really fascinates us in such a very interesting way. So what, what do you think why uh, Cyberpunk in general is just still thriving after, what, 30, maybe 40 years of, of existence? Well, I think the Cyberpunk in itself is really relatable. You know, first of all, the, the aesthetics are fantastic. You don't get anything quite like it. The mix of Western and Eastern aesthetics with technology, the lighting, the rain, uh, it, it all looks great. If you look at Blade Runner from, I don't even remember the year, from the 80s, it looks fantastic today. So I think aesthetics drive a big part for a lot of people, but mostly it's because it's relatable. <laughs> you know, we have, it's just an exaggeration of our society as it is today. We have these kind of mega corporations influencing politics, influencing, influencing elections and uh, lobbying or, you know, bribery, whatever you want to call it. It's just what's happening today, but on a more exaggerated scale. So let's talk about Terminal Overdrive. Um, tell us about the source book. Uh, how is it a continuation of Carbon 2185? Well, well, Carbon 2185 is, is the core rule book. It's, um, it's the game itself. Uh, a cyberpunk role-playing game built off of the fifth edition open game license and the reason we did that was to keep it very simple very streamlined and very approachable for new players the thing is we took away all of the fantasy and magic you know uh we didn't want to make shadow run shadow runs already exists we didn't want to make cyberpunk 2020 that already exists so we wanted a really simple streamlined system that did modern cyberpunk but on this uh, uh on a system everyone knows a system everyone can get behind terminal overdrive is a continuation of that in that it expands player options to bring uh new origins which in other uh games are called races uh the awakened mech origin is new and exclusive to terminal overdrive and that allows you to play the game as an awakened uh, robot with sentient AI, like uh, like in Chappie or you know C3PO in Star Wars, this kind of living robot, uh, and there's a lot of really fun gameplay options with that. But as well as these kind of new player options, Terminal Overdrive is a full length campaign uh, written by best selling Games Workshop author Ben Wo uh, Ben Counter, who wrote the Horus Harris uh, trilogy. Uh, he's a fantastic writer. He's done a really great job on it, and it, it really—it's a neuromancer-inspired story, uh, but told in the world of 2185. Oh wow! And how many pages is it? Uh, 150. Wow, that's amazing. Um, does the source book contain anything? Any other new items, such as uh, maybe a, an expanded equ equipment list or anything like that? There's a few little things sprinkled about, but the biggest thing that I haven't already mentioned, of course is the cyberspace rules. Now, we didn't have cyberspace rules in Carbon 2185 because we didn't feel it was essential to the feeling of cyberpunk. If you take a look at films like Blade Runner, for example, they never dive into cyberspace. But uh, we realized that a lot of people want that. So, and it does fit in the world. It does exist in virtual reality and stuff. So we added the rules for combat and exploring within cyberspace itself. Let's talk about the arc. I mean, the art is what really draws me again uh, yeah. to this book. Uh, talk about, let's talk about the, the, uh, the who, who did you get to to uh, work on this, uh, the, the direction, how did you, what, what direction did you want the art to go when you designed this book? Well, we wanted it to follow the same direction as the core rulebook. So we're using the same artists as the core rulebook and our lead art artist who does the cover work, which you've seen and some of the major pieces is a uh, Polish concept artist called Klaus Whitman who works for CD Projekt Red. He worked on The Witcher. Uh, he designed Siri and The Witcher. He worked on Cyberpunk 2077. And he also works on a lot of movies. He, uh, we almost didn't get him for this because he's working on the new Batman movie. 
um, doing the concept work for that. I think he had some part in designing the armor for Robert Pattinson's Batman, but luckily he had an available slot just as we needed him. The core rulebook. I know it's going to be updated with the with yes. this new Kickstarter. Uh, what what changes will happen with with the new this new version compared to the original previous? We're edition? adding about ten pages of content that it's not. St- we everything we wanted to get in the core rulebook at launch, we got in the book. Um, but then you know it's been out a year and a half now, and we've had loads of really great feedback. We had a beta period before that, of course, with uh, thousands of people. We've had even more feedback since it's been out and since people have played prolonged campaigns. We really started to find out what people really wanted and what was missing. So we've added a few more items, um, some more versatility, tweaked a few rules here and there. And uh, in general, we improved the formatting to make it just look slightly more professional. But most people won't notice, but (laughs) uh, it's just better. You know, it just looks better. There's more cool stuff in it. And because of this campaign, we're going to actually be able to afford to do that reprint because we sold out of the first print run. You know, wow. Uh, all 5,000 copies gone. Oh, congratulations. That's great. Thank you. Stretch goals. I know originally we were talking about it and when we were, doing, we were going to do this interview, uh, it was going to be right before your Kickstarter campaign happened. And now yeah. that we're, I'm looking at this now, it's you're, you're about to hit that that uh, the end of what you originally yeah, said for your stretch goals. Stretch goal. What other stretch goal ideas uh, do you have in mind for this? When we were planning the stretch goals, we wanted to make ones that we knew wouldn't cause delays. Because we like to release the stretch goals at the same time we release the books. So everything ships together, it keeps things a lot cheaper for customers. Um, our backers are fantastic. As, they're always fantastic, our backers. We've, <clears throat> we rarely have any trouble. And when we do have trouble, they're usually uh, uh, just a, you know an internet troll rather than an authentic backer. But um, we try to keep it cheap for them. And the one way we do that is by shipping everything at once and making sure everything's produced at once and ready at once. So what we kept in mind was, I mean, we didn't think it would fund as high as it has funded <laughs> throughout the whole campaign. And it's done really well. Um, so at the moment, we're looking forward to what stretch goals we can do from here um that won't cause delays uh what can you tell us about some of the uh um, opposition characters may face in terminal overdrive well the first uh opposition the first kind of set of enemies are called the enigma collective and they're a fellow cyberpunk group but kind of more malicious than your group or at least we hope they're more malicious than the players i mean the players don't have to be good guys in carbon 2185 they can they can do whatever they want uh you know perhaps you're playing a bad guys and these guys are taking some of your business you know but they're the first group you come up against and the more you defeat of them the more you realize something's up and you know this isn't really a spoiler um but you realize something's up and they're being they're connected to this this overarching villain the sculptress who is uh an ai um that has somehow gained sentience and has all sorts of nefarious plans and so the players have to first defeat the Enigma Collective and then go on and defeat the Sculptress. I'm, I'm talking, you know, major villains here. There is obviously more story than that. It's 150 pages long. Um, but yeah, that's it. You know, those are the two big ones. And okay. they're really a lot of fun. Oh, excellent. Uh, what, what, what levels uh, is this campaign? So it's from 1 to 10. Carbon 2185 is, only goes to level 10 um combat level you know we we don't call them levels we call them combat levels because that's what they are they're an improvement of your combat abilities and then we have influence levels as well which go from one to 20 uh which allow you to have more kind of connections get access to better gear better upgrades better augmentations and that sort of stuff so really there's two separate um character progression paths but in terms of combat level it's from one to ten so the whole way through okay okay excellent um so is are there any other things in the pipeline coming down that you would like to share with us i mean i know right now you're you're uh, you're still in the middle of this kickstarter uh mm-hmm. and i'm very glad that that um like great great books like carbon 2185 are still producing um, new books for for fans uh, but is there anything more possibly coming up down the line 
Well, we, we're always looking to do more Carbon 2185. You know, the more people buy it, the more people play it, the more people love it, the more we can release for it, you know. It's one of these fantastic cycles, like the more people like it, the more money we have to put back into it and bring out more stuff. But we're also working on uh, a couple of projects. Uh, one I can't really talk about yet. Uh, another one, which will be kind of the first quarter of next year, will be a, a combination of all of our D&D 5th edition adventures that we've published up till, uh, up till we release Carbon as a hardback. And that that would be about 250 pages as well. So that's going to be a nice selection of Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition adventures, you know, enhanced with new artwork and new maps and in print this time instead of, you know, PDF only, which they were at the time. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And then in summertime of next year, we're going to be releasing Solar Punk, uh, which is, you know, it's, it's the opposite of Cyberpunk. It's a super optimistic feature fueled by green energy um with perfect you know societies where everyone's equal and all this stuff but of course even in a perfect society with perfect technology our people are still people and people are inherently evil so you know even in this ideal society where everyone's got enough money to survive and enough resources to do so and everyone's equal there's still bad people doing bad things if you were to wake up in Carbon 2185, uh, what class would you be? Oh, I don't know about class. Um, I know what origin I'd be. Uh, I would be the regular Joe origin, which is just a normal guy. Uh, you know? <laughs> uh, we give you that option uh, in the game to just be a normal guy who's had a normal life up until the point they become a cyberpunk. If you look at great cyberpunk media like Blade Runner, Richard Deckard, depends where you're looking at him from he's a he's just a normal guy he's just a normal guy with a job you know he's a blade runner um or maybe he's a, a replicant it depends who you ask <laughs> but uh <laughs> you know if, if you look at alter carbon to catch kovacs up until his special forces training he's just a normal guy <laughs> you know he's just a normal guy who joins the military so i would just be i'd be a regular joke just just your normal guy and um if I had to be a cyberpunk, I'd probably be uh, a doc, you know, so I could help people out, heal them. And, uh, you know, I've, I've got a few aches and pains myself that I would love to inject nanites into and heal up <laughs> overnight. <laughs> <laughs> I will put the uh, the link below for the Kickstarter. Well, if you want to learn more about Carbon 2185, you can go on dragonturtlegames.com. If you want, if you're really impatient, and every pledge tier gets you a copy of the Core Robux Expedia. But if you can't wait to the end of the campaign, which is, you know, it's fair enough if you can't, you can go to buycarbon2185.com and buy the PDF for the Core Rulebook, which will be updated when the new one comes out, so you'll get a free upgrade, and buy the adventure pass you've already got out and play the game, like, immediately. Excellent. Well, Robert, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about this great book. I'm really excited about it. Love thank Cyberpunk. And, yeah, it's great to be on. And uh, our viewers out there, thank you for watching. Again, the links are in the description below. And have a great and safe day. Be careful out there.